Hey guys, my name is Gabby. Welcome back to my channel and today I'm gonna to be filming my March wrap-up. You guys like my new shirt? It's inspired from a little life, Jude and JB and Willem and Malcolm. And it's so cute. Okay, anyways. In the month of March, I read a total of 11 books, which amounted to this many pages. As far as genre goes, I read a total of five thrillers this month, which is like an all-time high, I think. And then I read one non-fiction, two historical fictions, two contemporaries, and one romance. Um, as far as my ratings went this month, I had seven four-star reads, which is like crazy high, like unusually high. And then I had two three-star reads, one two-star read, and one one-star read. Yeah, I officially had my first one-star read of 2019. And then as far as male versus female author goes, I have nine female authors and three male authors. And the reason why that doesn't add up to a, uh, 11 is because one of the books had a male and female author on it. So let's just jump into what I read this month. The first book I managed to read this month is I Know Who You Are by Alice Feeney. This is an arc that I received from Flatiron Books and it comes out in late April. This one is an adult thriller. It doesn't really tell you too much about what this book is about in the premise, but it's basically about this actress whose husband goes missing and $10,000 has been cleared out of their shared bank account. And that's pretty much all that the book tells you going into it but this book is about that and so much more it's like going and flashing back to the actress's childhood when something really horrific happened to her as a kid and so you're simultaneously going back and forth between her childhood and the present day when her husband's missing and this book was flipping crazy okay it was crazy i am actually planning on making a full video about this book in april because i just have so much to say about what happened in this book this one was very strange like it started off so 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 good and it was looking to be a five-star read for the first at least two-thirds of it and then by the last two-thirds of this book shit got freaking weird and like disturbing and like not in a good way and like just kind of made me like ugh like I felt like I needed a shower afterwards like I'll make a full video to talk about it when this book releases but yeah I ended up giving this one a three out of five star the next book that I read this month is For Everyone by Jason Reynolds this is a very short I listened to the audiobook the audiobook is only 30 minutes and it's basically this non-fiction book about following your dreams and how like everyone can achieve their dreams if they set out to do it and it was very short and sweet and very inspiring and I gave this one four out of five stars it's a really cute and short inspiring read and so if you're just looking for something to like start your day which I did I listened to it in the morning and I was just in a really great mood for the next couple of hours it is very short but it's definitely worth your time the next book that I read was my book of the month selection for March and that is Before She Knew Him by Peter Swanson and if you guys didn't know Peter Swanson is one of my favorite authors of all time like I absolutely love his books. This one it's kind of hard to explain what exactly this book is about but it basically follows these neighbors and the girl neighbor goes into the guy neighbor's house and she sees this trophy in his on his desk that was like involved in a recent murder that took place on the street that they used to live on that she was like really fascinated with this murder case and so he has the trophy with the kid's name on it that was involved in the murder and so she's thinking her neighbor is a murderer and then it simultaneously follows from his point of view when he's like oh shit she's on to me like she knows something because of the way she like saw the trophy and was like freaking out and it's this like crazy story falling back and forth between these two neighbors and trying to figure out like who exactly he is and like what happened and it's just a crazy wild time like i've really enjoyed this story the freaking plot twist at the end shook me so hard like i did not see it coming and i was just like what like it all makes sense now that was a perfect plot twist and i don't know why i didn't see it coming like so good like that plot twist holy shit and so i ended up giving this one four out of five stars and the only reason why i ended up knocking off a star is because i feel like there were a lot of slower chunks in this book that could have been taken out and i wasn't absolutely obsessed and in love with the story the way that i am with a lot of peter swanson's other books like this is probably my least favorite from peter swanson so far but i still really enjoyed it like it's still a great book which just says a lot about his writing and how much i love his other books all right so the next book i read this month was the immortalist by chloe benjamin and this one is a historical fiction kind of novel but more like literary fiction feel about these four 
four siblings who go to this psychic in the 1960s and she tells them the day that they're going to die. And then we get to follow in different sections all four of the siblings as they like live their lives up until their death date and how like knowing their death date has affected how they live their lives. So, oh my gosh, this book was so freaking cool and unlike anything I've ever read before. And this reading experience that I had with this book was really cool because I simultaneously read the book and listened to the audiobook like back and forth, which I never really do for books. I usually only read the physical book or only listen to the audiobook. So going back and forth was a really cool experience for me. This book is really unique because it feels like four books in one book because each section of the book follows a different sibling and the siblings are all so different and unique that like each one of their sections feels like a completely different book. But I do love this overall discussion in this book about whether or not we have any control over the way we die and whether or not we have any control over like huge decisions in our life or if things are just going to happen to us that we can't control. That whole discussion in this book about fate was so fascinating and is what made me like this book so much. Um, I did end up giving this book four out of five stars and the only reason why I didn't get a five out of five stars for me is because I never felt like I truly truly connected with any of the siblings like there were definitely some siblings that I liked to read about more than the other siblings and I think I definitely enjoyed the first two sections of the siblings more than the last two but I love this book because of the discussion that it brings up and it's I, it's just such a cool book. The fifth book I read this month is Baby Teeth by Zoj Stage. This one is an adult thriller so it follows this mom named Suzette who has this daughter named Hannah who Hannah is just like a troublemaker and she's like a psychotic demon child that's like your worst fear that you read about. The demon child acts like a little angel for her dad and then like when the mom when the dad leaves for the mom, she like shows her who she truly is and she's like a little psychopath basically. This book unfortunately is my first one star read of 2019. It didn't start off that bad, okay? It started off like kind of interesting. You know, I was intrigued and I do, I do tend to like thrillers that follow kind of like demonic crazy children just because they're so interesting to me. And so I was enjoying this book when I was first starting it out. And then I realized about halfway through that this story isn't going anywhere. Like it's literally just scene after scene after scene after scene of like this daughter acting like a total fucking psychopath and doing something insane and then when the dad comes back she's like a perfect angel and she acts like she doesn't know like anything wrong and whatever and it's like literally scene after scene like it's so repetitive it's just the same thing over and over and over again i skim read my way to the end and then it's just like nothing like nothing happens like and it was so disappointing because i feel like this story does have a lot of potential like it was definitely investing and like interesting in the beginning. Didn't really enjoy this one, unfortunately. I had to give it one star because it was just so frustrating by the end of it. I was just so annoyed and it's like I don't see any redeeming qualities about this book. The sixth book I read this month was my reread that I said I would read for this month and I did get around to it and it's Aced by Ella Frank and Brooke Blaine. This is a male male romance and it follows one character who's a huge successful action movie star and then the other guy is a model turned actor and they're both starring together in this sequel of like the action star dude's big movie. This is a very short and sweet male male romance that I just really love and adore. I love Ace and Dylan both so much and I love their chemistry and they're just so cute and I'm so glad that I reread this and I didn't realize the first time I read this that I also gave it four stars. For some reason I thought every book that I was rereading was a five star book but it was a four star read the first time I read it and now this time that I read it it was also a four star read. Like it wasn't quite up there as a five star read but yeah so I mean I have like pretty much the same thoughts about it as I did the first time I read it so at least I'm consistent I guess. The seventh book that I read this month is Say You're Sorry by Karen Rose. This is a 600 page romantic thriller. So I was attempting to do a video with this book called like reading a 600 page book in six days. Just read 100 pages every day for six days with this book. But after 250 pages of this book I decided to DNF it because it was just so flippin' repetitive and boring and I just couldn't get into it and it had been 250 pages. I ended up giving it two out of five stars but this book is basically about this serial killer 
and then it follows from the point of view of the serial killer and the detective that's like going around trying to find out what's going on. And then it also follows from the point of view of one of the serial killer's victims who escaped. Then it's also a romance between the girl, the victim who escaped from the serial killer and the detective. It's like a romance between them. I guess I just really don't enjoy thrillers that follow from the point of view of a detective. Like I just find them so boring and like stale. I knew that about myself but I thought maybe if it was also a romance it would like cancel it out and make it a little bit more interesting but I was wrong. Right so the eighth book that I read this month is Five Feet Apart by three different authors here. I think this girl Rochelle is the one who actually wrote this book and then the other two Mickey and Tobias are the ones who wrote the screenplay. But this one is a young adult contemporary novel that I probably wouldn't have picked this book up myself. Like I will say, like I'm just not really into young adult contemporary anymore. I probably wouldn't have picked this book up myself if it wasn't for the fact that Simon and Schuster had sent this book to me. And I've just been hearing a lot of really great things about this book and the movie. And I still really do want to see the movie, by the way. That follows these two teenagers. She has cystic fibrosis and he has B. Saperia, I want to say that it's pronounced. And so he has something that's just a little bit worse than what she has. So they can't stand within six feet of each other or else they risk and they risk infecting each other. And so this is definitely, it feels to me like the Fault in Our Stars meets everything, everything kind of. But yeah, I actually really enjoyed this book. Like this book surprised me. Like I kind of went into it thinking it was just going to be like, you know, cliche, cheesy YA. And like a part of this book is like, it's definitely a little bit more cheesy, like especially towards the end in my opinion. But I did connect a lot with these characters and I actually thought that they were really cute. Four out of five stars. The only reason why this one didn't get a five out of five is because of the fact that it was a little bit like YA cliche tropey at times, you know, but like I still really enjoyed it and I thought it was great and it actually did make me a little bit emotional. <laughs> right, the ninth book I read this month is The Queen of Hearts by Kimmery Martin and this book is a hospital drama romance and this one takes place in the south and it takes place kind of like in a hospital setting and it follows these two best friends, Zadie and Emma. But then it also like, it takes place during the present when they're like in their 30s and they're married and they have kids and there's all this drama. And then it also flashes back to when they were in college and something crazy happened. Yeah, this book was okay. This book I did end up giving three out of five stars. Like it was an okay book, but I'm personally not a huge fan of like medical TV dramas. Like I've just never watched them like Grey's Anatomy and all that. But I think if you are a huge fan of medical TV dramas, then I think you would really probably enjoy this book because I felt like this book for me personally was so bogged down by the medical talk and the medical jargon that I just could not get invested in this story. So much detail about the medical aspect of things and I was just like, I don't really care. And like, I didn't understand any of the language being used because it was all like medical talk. So I unfortunately couldn't really get invested into the story because of that, but that doesn't necessarily make it a bad book. Like it's obviously a decent, interesting story that I think is just not for me. So that's why I ended up giving it three out of five stars. But I do think if you like Grey's Anatomy and all those like medical TV dramas, then I think you would really enjoy this book. The 10th book that I read this month is My Lovely Wife. And this book just came out at the end of March and I could not resist picking this up because it's an adult thriller. It's a debut novel from this author. And the reason why I wanted to pick this one up is because I just saw it over on Kayla Books and Lala's channel and she gave it five out of five stars. So I was like, holy crap, I have to read this book now. <laughs> and so this book, the premise is also a huge reason why I wanted to pick this up because the premise says it's Dexter meets Mr. and Mrs. Smith because it's about this girl who's a serial killer and her husband goes out and like picks the women for her to kill, basically. In my opinion though, this book is definitely more Dexter meets Santa Clarita Diet. Yes, it's like Dexter because she's like the female version of Dexter, like a serial killer, but then it's also like Santa Clarita Diet because the husband goes out and like finds women for her to kill. So it's like so like Santa Clarita Diet to me, which I just love because I freaking love that show. That's like the basic premise of this book. Like I can't really tell you too much else without spoiling it. This book is just so 
entertaining. It's freaking insane. Yeah, I ended up giving this one four out of five stars. And the only reason why this one didn't get five out of five for me is because of the fact that I feel like this book was a little long and like there were definitely some chunks of this book that could have been cut out. But oh my gosh, this book was just so entertaining and I do highly recommend it because it was just a really great time. Like it was just so fucked up, but like so great. And so the last book that I read in the month of March is Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. And if you're like thinking that you thought I've already read this book, then you'd be correct. I did read this book in January this year and I didn't enjoy it at all the first time that I read this. I ended up giving it two out of five stars and I just was not a fan of the physical version of this book. So this month I decided to pick up the audiobook because my library had the audiobook available and everybody says that the audiobook is like significantly better than the print version of this book. So I went ahead and listened to it and I would say that everybody's right because I ended up giving this book four out of five stars this time that I listened to the audiobook. The audiobook is really great because there's a full cast of characters voicing the audiobook. Huge part of the reason why I didn't enjoy this book the first time that I read it is because this entire book is told in interview form. So it's like literally this entire book is like a narrator saying like Daisy Jones and the Six did this and then it's like all the characters commenting like what happened and this narration style did not work for me at all in the physical form like I found it very frustrating and very annoying and I couldn't connect with any of the characters. This time listening to the audiobook the voices really made the characters come to life and it made me connect a lot more with the characters. Like listening to the audiobook it still did take me some time to get used to that writing style even with the audiobook which is why it only got a 4 out of 5 for me and because like as much as I did enjoy this story this time around like I really did enjoy Daisy's character character a lot more in the audiobook and Billy's character and Camila's character a lot more in the audiobook. I think Camila is my favorite character in this whole book by the way. But yeah this book is about this band Daisy Jones and the Six that takes place in the 1970s. It's like a historical fiction novel and it's about how this band got together for one album and then broke up and so this is like the first time that the band's like telling the story about what happened. I did love so much more this time around listening to Daisy and how she like came to know the band and how she just kind of like took over and I loved hearing about her like writing with Billy and just like Billy and Camila's relationship and just like oh my god there were so many great things in this book that I enjoyed so much more because of the audiobook and I'm so glad I did end up giving this book a second chance because like Taylor Jenkins Reid is my favorite author. Not liking this book the first time around was very like ugh, disappointing for me. I think I just went into it with very high expectations and very false expectations because I just expected it to be a lot more like Evelyn Hugo and Evelyn Hugo is just so different from this. Like this is a completely different book and it's not even similar like obviously i mean obviously but yeah i still ended up only giving it four out of five stars just because i don't think this book is as good as taylor jenkins reads other books i think this book does like that thing that i kind of hate too in books when it does a lot of telling and not showing like i hate when books like when the authors tell things instead of show things and the only way i know how to describe this is like we get to see what happened instead of getting to experience it with the main characters. So like I think that's like the main difference in this book and like Evelyn Hugo is because in Evelyn Hugo it's like you get to experience her entire career with her basically. But then in this book it's like we just get to hear about what happened in the past. We just get to hear that Daisy Jones is like such a badass and she's like so crazy but we don't actually get to see her be those things. So that's what I mean when I say like I don't like I don't like books that tell things to you instead of show things to you. So yeah, that's like the main reason why I still ended up giving this one 4 out of 5. Like it's not my favorite, but it was a lot better this time. So those are all the books that I read in the month of March. That was a crazy month and even though I didn't have any 5 star books that I read this month, I still think that I had a very great reading month. I mean, we have 7 books, 4 stars. I mean, that's pretty high for me. Not sure what my favorite book from this month was. Like, looking back on it, it's probably either going to be The Immortalist or Daisy Jones and the Six. Like, let me know if you've read any of these books, what your thoughts are on any of these books, and let me know how many books you read in the month of March, what was the best book that you read in the month of March. Thank you guys so much for watching as always and I will see you guys soon with a new video.